Nut Nerd Podcast, Episode 290, The ABCs of Travel. Welcome to the Not Nerd Podcast. I'm Nate Heath, and we are here to help you tech better. Here with me from halfway across the country, Mr. Dave Baylor. Yes, and you may have noticed both of us are speaking with dulcet tones because we are up early to record this show. Yes. I am in sunny, uh, cool Colorado while you are sitting in very, very hot uh, Portland, Oregon right now. And yes. so if the audio drops out or something's weird, um, I'm on two bars LTE and oh, um, over my limit for... Uh, tethering on my macbook so we'll see how this goes today <laughs> yes and the uh worst of the temperatures are over here in portland after setting three new all-time high records the last three days uh it dropped 30 degrees within an hour last night and wow people will not be complaining about the high of 95 today after hitting i believe it was 116 degrees wow. Fahrenheit at the portland airport yesterday but that's it's all relative Yes, yes. Thank the Lord for air conditioning and also for tech news. Yes. Because uh, we know how much Elliot loves hearing the weather report. <laughs> yes, he loves it. <laughs> down in the down in sunny Australia. Yes. Uh, well, we've got some follow-up. Um, so YouTube TV, I ditched my cable many moons ago mm -hmm. and went with YouTube TV. They have unveiled a... They've also they've raised their price like twenty times over the last yeah. couple of years, but now they've unveiled their premium add-on where you can pay even more. And what do you get for wow. that twenty or sorry, nineteen ninety nine a month? You get four K offline downloads and unlimited streams in the. I was going unlimited streams. That's how TV, you know, watching TV works. It means within your household, you can be watching as many different streams as you want. So I think it was limited to maybe two before. And before you go and think, well, I'm just going to buy it. And then 30 of my friends are going to share it because we have unlimited streams. It has in the yeah. same household thing. So they're going to be checking IP addresses and locations and all that stuff yes. just to make sure it's your same family. And even though they say unlimited, I bet there's a limit somewhere you know yes yes some kind <laughs> and they are providing ever all subscribers with dolby digital support for surround sound and better sound but it's 20 dollars a month to get this 4k so i'm like with my new apple tv 4k and my new 4k tv do i pay the extra 20 dollars a month but they are offering a 30-day free trial and then discounted to nine ninety nine a month for a year to get you hooked. Yeah. What well, this is not for me. Is this something that you would be interested in? Uh, I I'll try out the thirty day trial, but I'm already paying them. I believe sixty five dollars a month Yikes. for my YouTube TV. So we we will report back on that. And if anybody else signs up for it and is really enjoying it and thinks it's worth it, let us know. I think it was just last week we were talking about the COVID uh, tracking, track and trace apps and how that just really wasn't uh, something that got widespread use. Well, came out this last week that uh, in Massachusetts, they had partnered with Google to actually create the app. And uh, as they were rolling it out, Google decided to automatically install it on Android phones. Yeah, we were just talking about that. And they've done something here that's a little bit different than just installing an API in the latest version of the software so that different states and municipalities can take advantage of this technology. No, they've gone even further. And in some cases, it's been reported, whether it's accurate or not. Yes. I, there's a follow-up to this article. But the premise of the article was that they were also installing the Massachusetts application on your phone. And uh, this would be similar to what Apple did a while back when they put the U2 album on yes. everybody's phones for free. And people were like, why are you injecting albums into my music and now I got to avoid U2 uh, like the plague to get around it and it's a big hassle. So they gave people the ability to take it off. But in the same vein, they just went in ahead and stuck an app on your phone. And this isn't really from Android or Google. It's from 
the state. And so they've obviously partnered with Google to make this happen. But um, I don't really like this at all. If this is an actual thing that the government can put applications on your phone, because then it's a slippery slope to tracking you, which they can already do through the cell companies and uh, all that stuff. But yes, it seems a little big brotherish to me. Is there any other clarifying information that you got from this article? Uh, yeah, and they do have some stuff. The app is called Mass Notify, and uh, they the Google Play Store shows that it has more than a million installs, and there's only 6.8 million residents in Massachusetts. So you would not think that within one week uh, that 20% of the population would install this app, especially with where we are at in the uh, yeah. timeline of the pandemic. So. And many people, of uh, many of those 6 million have iPhones, which this isn't yes. even a thing. Yeah, that's, <laughs> so, yeah, that's 50% probably of the population. So you're looking yeah. at maybe 40% of uh, all people said, hey, I need a COVID tracking yeah. track and trace app. I'm going to install this uh, within the first week. So interesting story. Uh, yeah, it is kind of one of those things that Google and Apple both have the ability to do, uh, you know, either pull or push apps, but uh, this does not seem, there was a statement from Google, but it is uh, very vague very and vague. protected. So uh, it doesn't really address the issue, but it sounds like it does. All so this we'll really can, all this really confirms is that someone in Massachusetts is listening to our show because I postulated last week, well, why couldn't yes. the government just put this on the back end of all the phones and track everybody uh, without anyone knowing? And it looks like that's what they tried to do in Massachusetts. Yeah, exactly. They were like, oh, not nerd said to do it. Boom. Yeah. Flip yeah. the big red switch. <laughs> Uh, and w we've talked several times about, you know, big tech. There's been all these hearings and these bills that they've tried. Well, this last week, there is now a package of bills. I forget if it's four or five different ones talking about uh, what we're supposed to do with tech. Now, I've tried to pay attention. There's the State Antitrust Enforcement Venue Act, the Merger Filing Fee Modernization Act, the Access Act, the Platform Competition and Opportunity Act, the American Choice and Innovation Act, and the Ending Platform Monopolies Act. So um, all these politicians had some people write these acts for them, and they're trying to get them onto the floor so they could vote on them. It sounds like some of them are kind of red herrings where they mm -hmm. wrote these ones that are too crazy so you hear about that on the news and you go no way that's going to pass and then when you read the other one that is actually crazy you're like oh, that sounds pretty normal mm -hmm. um but it's uh it'll be an interesting year if any of these go through and and we get any any more regulation on our large social media and tech companies that do have a lot of power and make a whole lot of money i did side note uh saw that facebook just um crossed the one trillion uh Ooh, you know wow. stock value point and microsoft mm -hmm. just hit the two trillion to join apple and then amazon's been floating up there so we're yeah. talking a whole lot of money with these companies we are and don't forget the golden rule those who have the gold make the rules. <laughs> Very true. And you know the other golden rule, Dave's Pro Tip of the Week. Well, this week I would I thought I would bring us all a travel tip. And it's something that's intuitive but oft not followed because it's kind of a hassle and you got to plan and yada, yada, yada. And of course, what I'm talking about is the ABCs of travel. And that is always be charging. We're on this trip out here in Colorado and we're going on some day trips that are two hours away. Then we uh, spend the day, then we s drive two hours back, that type of stuff. And I'll use my kids in it for an example. Hey, Sam, you better plug in your, your phone on the way to this thing. Oh, I'm good. I'm like 98% or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's two hours away and I'm good. And then you get to the event and then you stand around there and do stuff for two hours and they're of course sending snapchat and youtube and tiktok and whatever yeah. videos to their friends and and then they're like oh my phone is dead do you have a power brick and a charger i could borrow i'm like yeah but remember what we remember? talked about 
I'm the always be charging guy. So of course I carry around like five power bricks and extra cables because it's inevitable. They're always going to ask me. So I gave Sam one and he charged his thing. And I went back to the car and got another one for myself. Yes. And then his died. <laughs> the power brick died because it wasn't fully charged. Yeah. And he said, well, this isn't working anymore. And I said, well, look at the thing. The battery's out. So I traded him. He's like, you're holding out on me. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> I'm prepared. I'm prepared. You're not prepared. You're like, yes, sucking off of my teeth right here, boy. So uh, anyway, the tip is if you're going to be traveling, if you're going to Disneyland this summer, if you're going to go to a vacation in central Colorado in the middle of nowhere where there's bears and rattlesnakes and everything else except for cell coverage and power, you should plan ahead and at least bring a battery pack. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, my older brother and his wife brought, oh my goodness, the biggest, giantest, largest battery packs I'd ever seen. <laughs> I did not take the time to take a look to see how many milliamp hours it had, but they were about the same dimension as like a seven inch Kindle fire. Oh, wow. And about three times as thick. These things were <laughs> enormous. So they didn't charge those the whole time they were here. Yeah. And when they were at the house or wherever traveling, they were always plugged into that so that they had power. So thumbs up to them. Good on them. They always had power because they were all they were always be charging. <laughs> and that's what you should do, dear listener, when you're traveling. Yeah, that, that, that those seem a little unwieldy. It goes back to I've discussed before. For it's like know where you're going if you're yes if you're going to the wilderness take a car battery with you if you're going <laughs> yeah. to the corner market take the little lipstick battery pack but that's also because i have 10 million battery packs but that is such a great tip and many people over the last year are very used to sitting at home on their wi-fi uh using their phones and when you're out and about, your phone's just going to die quicker, especially if you're driving somewhere, you're changing cell towers, it's mm -hmm. looking for signal, you're taking, like you were saying, more photos, videos, you're looking at, you're doing maps, so... Yeah. Yeah. yeah think about it. This tiny device with, you know, a very small battery is having to transmit a cellular signal, sometimes a mile or more. I don't even know how it does it. Yeah. I mean, am I getting cancer? by this thing sending out such a powerful Probably. signal but it's sending out a signal so powerful and when it's seeking and searching cell towers all day long that takes a lot of energy yeah so you're right sitting at home on wi-fi the phone has to do no work it's right there but when you're somewhere else and you're out and about especially with gps and those type of apps weather apps and all those things that are sucking data it really adds up and your battery goes quick Yes. Well, let's move on to our takes of the week. Uh, I do want to mention um, one in a string of odd uh, passings in our uh, zeitgeist over the last several years. Mr. John McAfee, which you might recognize that last name as the uh, founder of McAfee Antivirus, was, uh, we were just going to leave it as found dead in Spanish prison cell. Mm -hmm. uh, there is much speculation about what happened there, but um, he was over there trying to escape the U.S. government, and uh, apparently a Spanish court had just uh, agreed to extradite him to the United States uh, so they could, I think it was tax stuff. Yeah, tax I mean, evasion. He, is, he hadn't paid taxes in years and all kinds of other stuff. Yes, yeah, so the, the movie on John McAfee will be, or the book at least, uh, he mm -hmm. is a very interesting guy. He's been very into crypto, uh, which we will not discuss where crypto prices are right now. But uh, And he's, he's also like conspiracy type stuff like yes. he's always been saying for months and years that the government is after him they've been sending people his life is in danger and all these things and he's even said i if i get caught and i die i i'm not suicidal it's yeah. someone's out to get me and they're gonna murder me and so he ends up in a spanish prison and then he wakes up dead one day <laughs> You got to think, hmm, is this like what happened? You yeah. know, is this a con conspiracy or did he just do I die normally or what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. And he actually, it was probably about a year ago. I think, uh, in fact, I think on Twitter, somebody found out was exactly a year ago. He, from the day he passed, he was on the, uh, he called into the Adam Carolla podcast and uh, he was on the run at that point and his wife 
uh, you know, who kind of set up the thing, said, uh, we're not telling you where he is. He's got exactly this much time, then he has to go. And he said something to the effect of, yeah, if you find me dead, I didn't kill myself, no matter what mm -hmm. they say. So the mystery remains around John McAfee, but very smart guy. Uh, <laughs> as much as yeah. we love and hate antivirus software, uh, McAfee was a good thing, and he did some other good things, but did want to mention that. And as we said last week, as we announced last week, Microsoft announced Windows 11 this past week since our last episode. Now, I watched the uh, Twit coverage of the um, Windows 11 Mm -hmm. event you know virtual event that microsoft had i've listened to a couple podcasts on it basically my take for the average person is windows 11 is going to come out this fall it's going to be a free upgrade if your computer can handle it it's going to have a little bit different look but not too different it's going to bake their apps in a lot more and you can install android apps yeah, that's probably the big thing. Kind of like on Apple, now that they're running on their own silicon, you can install iOS apps on your Mac and run most of them quite effectively. This is going to be uh, kind of that same turn where you can install mobile Android apps right on your desktop in your Windows environment. Yes, yes. And so uh, we will see. I think it's going to ship with the Amazon Fire Store, um, which is a pretty, pretty limited Android and I heard some people discussing, you know, which Android apps do I want to install? Maybe some games, but uh, so yeah, Windows 11 mm -hmm. coming this fall. They're going to keep, I also heard that they're going to keep Windows 10 uh, going for at least five years. So it's going to be another horrible transition to a new version of Windows. Yeah. <laughs> and enough on Windows 11. And this is just an interesting one that I actually found a link to Facebook's one of their or their Facebook news page and then they've got a link to their study on this new AI research project they've they've done called Textile Brush. Now somebody that does a lot of graphic design and Photoshop and all that kind of stuff. It's very interesting. So they can you can take a photo. So let's say you took a photo of uh, you know a McDonald's sign or somebody's handwriting. Well, then they use AI to create a font, a complete font out of that, so that you can use that. Now, wow. I immediately think, well, this would be helpful sometimes if I'm trying to find a really weird font for somebody and create something. But then it's also like, so somebody could take a picture of a couple words that I wrote and then recreate a complete note in my handwriting. So mm -hmm. they have yeah, not, that's not fun. <laughs> no, they uh, have not released this yet, and they're. Uh, definitely, they're submitting it for peer review, and so it's kind of a very high high level, but interesting if you want to look at what they're doing with this. Uh, you mm -hmm. can check the link in the show notes. Yeah, at first I thought it was kind of like the app you could point at a font and it would tell you, like you'd see, point at a sign and it would tell you what font it was or it'd yeah, give you yeah. the best guess. And then you could go find the font and download it and use it or whatever. But this is quite another thing where it actually creates the font for you. Um, just by looking at a few letters, pretty incredible. Yes, yes, it is. And uh, our last take, I wanted to mention our favorite web browser, Brave, the one where that is very secure. It's built on the Chromium uh, platform, and we earn free crypto just for using the web browser. They have a search engine in beta, so mm -hmm. um, they are creating a search engine. I haven't gotten a chance to use it much, and I've heard it's okay, but it's, again, very privacy. Uh, and security focused so it, this is going to be brave is going places can we buy st i guess stock we have and stock in brave because <laughs> we have a bunch of brave tokens yeah uh, that's this, this is very interesting because DuckDuckGo has been a competitor to google search and i've been using them for probably a year now and you know i don't miss google that much you know we've talked occasionally you have to go back into google and to really find something um, if, if you're having issues. But nine times out of 10, probably probably 99 out of 100 times, 
DuckDuckGo is fine for me. So if Brave Browser has a search engine that works just as fine as DuckDuckGo, then I'll probably just use that since it's built into my uh, browser that I like to use. And there was talk at one point that Apple would be buying DuckDuckGo or something like that. Everyone's coming knocking on Google's door, and it'll yep. be interesting to see how it plays out with Bing, DuckDuckGo, and now Brave Browser Search competing with Google finally after probably a decade yeah. where there was just no competition at all. Yes. Well, and I did just do a search for not nerd and I'm not too happy with them yet because it, instead of showing results for not nerd, it shows results for not I nerd, which is a, uh, you know, YouTube channel. And I don't even know what they do. They have all their social media and stuff. So that came up. Let's see how many followers they have. Oh, 28,000 followers on uh, Instagram. So they're somewhat big. And then you yeah, can search close to what we have. What do we have? Like 12 or something? Yes. I think. Yeah. Uh, you can search instead for not nerd. And then we do come up second in those results. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, but it's still in beta. They're just getting started with this, but some interesting stuff they're doing there. For sure. Uh, and you won't have to use any search engine to find the dumbest internet videos in our bonus odd take. I have a link to the greatest achievements in dumb internet videos. So this is another one of those lists of a lot of those viral videos of just dumb people doing uh, not necessarily stupid stuff, but just kind of goofy videos. So it's uh, it's good for a fun watch through. Some of them I recognize, some of them I did not and probably should go through just so I'm aware of what's what's been done in the dumb internet video. None of mm -hmm. our videos made it. So Yeah, this is kind of an archive of, of all of the greatest hits of the YouTube era of yes. interesting YouTube. I see Homestar Runner on there. Yep. There's that Hitler's downfall parody where they take a clip from a movie and they insert their own text in the bottom. Yes. Zombie kid who likes turtles and the list goes on and on and on. Some, if you need some uh, brain dead video watching and uh, <laughs> a little bit of history of viral videos and that would be a great link to visit those people are doing the world a service by consolidating all of that so we don't have to go search for it yes and we're also doing the world a service with our picks of the week yes another travel tip now several years ago you bought me this anchor cord it's a three foot cord it has usb a on one side and it kind of has a tri-tip configuration oh, yeah. on the other side where it's usb um, min micro, yeah, micro, I believe. Is that what the one that it is? Yeah. Um, and then it's got a, a lightning connector adapter that fits over the top of the micro so that now the cable goes from USB-A to lightning. And there's another tip that's USB-C, so you can have an A to C USB setup. And I like this cable because I can just bring one cable around with me and not have to have three different ones. We're like, well, I might need a USB-C, which I usually don't. Yeah. But when I do, I'm sad that I don't have one. But this cable helps me out in most situations. Of course, it doesn't have the USB mini or some other type of crazy connectors. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think. It's not like a Thunderbolt cable or something crazy or Firewire or whatever. <laughs> it's just the three major ones that you're going to use uh, from time to time. And I went to Walmart, of all places, and didn't purchase the fancy anchor one, which at last check, those cost about 20 bucks. And if you think, well, I'm getting three cables in one, that's not a bad price. It's yeah. a little spendy. But Walmart's on brand, O-N-N -N brand, has the a version of this cable. I don't know who ripped off whom, but the, the on brand has a nearly exact cable with all the same setup. For eleven ninety nine, I purchased this, and so I brought two of them with me, and it's been indispensable because I just grab the two cables. We go on our day trips. If some, if I need to charge a phone, or uh, if someone had an Android phone or whatever, I just pull the tip off, and there's your your USB uh, mini. It's great, and if anybody. And along with me had the USB type C on a newer Android phone, that cable works for that as well. So yeah, um, two cables, uh, other family members have brought other cables. So we have a little bit more than just these two, but these two have come in so handy this trip and they take up so much less room than a box of cables. So yes. um, if you don't want to spend the 20 bucks on 
a pretty darn good quality anchor cable. You can get the lesser version uh, from On from Walmart, and it's worked just fine this trip. I don't know how long it'll last yeah. going forward, but it works great. Nice. Yes, I actually have my anchor one plugged into my power strip that has some USB plugs next to my desk just for when I need those mm -hmm. those other ones. So good pick. Well, I've also amazingly got a travel tip. We went on a short uh, journey this last week and on the way back I could have used this one and I saw it I think the day after we got home um, but you might want to go download it immediately Dave. It is called the Flush app. Okay. And what this is, is uh, much like Run P or Gas Buddy, this is yeah. a public toilet finder. Oh, this would have come in handy a couple times this trip. Yes, yes. So uh, you just go on there and you can allow it to use your map or you can search for a location um, and it'll just kind of pop up with different. So I'm doing near my house and it shows you know, the Starbucks uh, that's nearby it shows the Fred Myers. Um, so it's uh, results may vary, but it looks pretty thorough just looking in my own uh, Tualatin Community Park. Um, but if when I zoom out to Portland, I mean, there is probably hundreds of uh, restrooms here wow. uh, that you might be able to use in a pinch, which we ended up at a very remote gas station because I took the wrong exit uh, <laughs> and my my wife was not excited about the porta potty in the uh, direct sunlight that she had oh to visit uh, yes, on our way that. home. You warm that up, it smells real good. Yes, yes. Well, our Ramazon purchase uh, segment is still on hiatus because I have not heard back from Amazon yet on our affiliate account. They are ignoring me. Uh, they kicked hmm. us off. But uh, ironically enough, I believe we recorded last Monday... Uh, for last week's episode, which is the first day of Prime Day, which was the day that I got the email saying it was turned off. Mm -hmm. And Wes excitedly sends me a text and says, oh, I'm so excited. I finally remembered to use the affiliate link to buy something on Amazon. And I said, funny you say that because <laughs> it doesn't work. Anymore. <laughs> a mere six hours earlier, our account was shut off. Uh, so I do actually have a, a prize uh, somewhat unrelated, but that I'm going to give Wes anyways, because he finally remembered after all this time just happened to happen after they turned us off. Right. So it's yes, for effort, at least. Yes, I'm I I'm hoping that we can figure out some way to get that going just because we do buy so much stuff off Amazon and uh, we have all these links everywhere and everything, but uh, who knows if we'll get that figured out or not. It might have all been in vain and we'll just have to start begging people for money yeah. uh, to keep <laughs> us going so that we don't we don't go to the poor house. Yeah, so we don't have to sell our kids and all our houses and everything. So Yes, well... Dave, I know, I believe you are recording in a vehicle and I'm sure your family is probably circling the, circling the wagons, trying to get, yes. they're like get vultures to get some adventures. time with me. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I will let you get back to your vacation and I will let everybody get out there and tech better. <laughs> My sinuses to be. haven't woken up yet <laughs> not enough caffeine in the system to loosen up the nasal right <laughs>